she is interested in this topic including earthquake engineering non linear behavior assessment of structure risk mitigation resilience seismic protection of cultural heritage we welcome you ma'am thank you thank you sir ma'am you can start keep it Okay, I hope you can hear me now. Uh, yes, yes ma'am, yes ma'am. Okay, so uh, as I have been presented, my name is Vesile Hatuna Kansal. I'm talking from um, Turkey, uh, the coastal city Mula. Uh, and today I will talk about, first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation. And uh, I will be pleased to present this presentation. And today I want to talk about the seismic risk and condition assessment for especially for different purposes and for different type of structures. So can you see my presentation now? Okay, I hope you can. Let me first open the chat box. It's not visible only. Excuse me, can you see that? Ah, yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's continue. So this is me, okay, and they talk more about me, so I will not mention the details uh, again. So uh, I, I prefer to present the whole presentation at one time, okay? And I will ask you to ask questions at the end of the presentation, if you don't mind, okay? If it's very urgent, you can disturb and ask it, but if it's not, please uh, just wait to finish the presentation and then you may ask the questions. So this is the outline of the presentation for today. The condi uh, I will I will. Uh, I have prepared the presentation in two parts. In the first one, uh, we have look at. Okay, I think I should first disable the annotation. Just okay. I don't know where to make it. Just okay. Now it's fine. Can I delete it? Not. Don't know. Uh, Miss Vesili, Dr. Vesili, yes. yeah, yes. you have to just close the presentation once. Presentation? Yeah, you just have to close the presentation and then disable okay. the annotation. 
Yes, I did it. Just I don't uh, know how to delete the last uh, draw no, yellow you lines. Once, yeah, once you close it, it will automatically go. Once you okay. restart the presentation, it will go on its own. Otherwise, you okay. have to use the erase. Erase option is there. The easier way is to simply close the presentation and share it again, once again. Okay, I will do that now. Thank you. Stop sharing. Yes, I think it's okay now. Yes, hopefully it's better. Thank you, Professor Madavi. So uh, in the first part, I will talk about the risk assessment for a region after an earthquake. It's important because in this way, uh, I will show you how to we, uh, how we determine the fault mechanism and uh, de depending on especially the, the damage in the structures, okay, and in the site. So uh, in the second part, I will mention uh, about the before earthquake this time, we will look, we have look at the school buildings and historical structures, but in here, I will only mention one of them. Uh, it's a very specific, unique historical structure and it will be very nice to mention that. So we have a new seismic hazard map. Uh, most of the, uh, mostly it looks like, uh, the idea is looks like the American code, okay? We have the uh, S1 and SS, short and uh, long periods, spectral acceleration values. Uh, and it's newly derived uh, for the 2019 uh, Turkish earthquake code. So uh, in the first part, uh, I want to mention one study that we have made after one earthquake. Okay, it's in the Eastern, it's on the Eastern Turkey. And uh, we look at the interpretation of the uh, recorded strong ground motions and post earthquake conditions of the nearby structures. So, and the 23 October 2011, one earthquake occurred in this uh, system on a fault that was not mapped on the active fault map uh, of Turkey. And the Anatolian plate under uh, the continuous westward lateral movement and rotation due to the northward motion of the Arabian plate. You can see these uh, red lines actually representing the fault mechanisms, fault, fault lines. Okay, uh, and the major tectonic structures in Turkey are well studied, North Anatolian fault zone and East Anatolian fault zone. No. The both of the fault zone generate predominantly uh, stack slip events. And these fault systems uh, had lead to severe earthquakes uh, historically, uh, as well as in the Anatolia uh, from a uh, as a result of the northward movement of the Arabian plate, uh, plate being subducted beneath the uh, Eurasian plate, plate. So consistent with the uh, tectonic stress field in the area, the fault mechanism uh, was thought to be uh, a truss with a strike deep and rake angles as given on the slide with respect to the USGS. So this is the, uh, city of one, okay, and, and it's a seven magnitude earthquake, uh, or it was actually, and you can see the details of the earthquakes on the slide. So the major uh, historical uh, earthquakes are marked as red uh, squares on the map. The yellow ones are showing the instrumental strong ground motion recordings. Uh, and the star indicates the epicenter as reported by the USGS. So in this figure, you can see the special distribution of the PGA. The star and 
the rectangle plane indicate the epicenter uh, and the fault plane, like this one, respectively, uh, as reported by USGS. The largest PGA and the PGV about uh, 180 centimeters per second uh, square and 26 uh, centimeters per square, respectively, uh, are recorded at station uh, 6503, which is the darkest red one, uh, as you can see on the um, figure. And this is the dis uh, special distribution of the PGV. The star and rectangle plane indicate the epicenter again. And in this one, you can see the PGA and the damage distribution of the uh, locations, let's say. So the severe one is the red and the ye uh, yellow one is means that no damage. And depending on that, we try to uh, look for the footfall and hanging fall on the side by looking at the damage distribution. Okay, this is just and given for the uh, stations mostly, okay? Uh, sorry, the, for the structures uh, and the village, let's say. Uh, and you can see that this uh, green, green ones means no damage, okay? And the red ones uh, means uh, there's severe damage and um, we have many moderate damage during the uh, fault in line. So you can see the information on strong ground motion stations that recorded the earthquake. Okay. And these are the four close and known stations for the one earthquake and one radia with this Marquez or the stand, let's say, Bush Malazgirt uh, and Sia. Uh, Cheshme, uh, this is in uh, Iran, okay? And site class for the stations were observed as Z3, Z2, and Z3. And uh, in the previous earthquake code, we, we have this, uh, this study is ex um, done according to the previous earthquake that we have in 2007, it named as. Uh, and according to the previous uh, zonation map, we have, um, yes, we have the zonation maps for the earthquake, earthquake regions. So uh, to further investigate the characteristics of the recorded motions, compare uh, the observed PG selected ground motion prediction equations, um, which means the ground motion prediction equations of Kakan and Gyukan, Ulusay et al, Akar and Bomar, uh, Bomar, Akar and Janan, and Boer and Atkinson uh, denoted as respectively K uh, KG04 and U et al. Uh, 04, AB10, AC10, and VA08, okay, uh, in the next slides. So we uh, look for the PGA versus the uh, distance and check the GMP relationships uh, for each uh, GMP equation. And we observed that the uh, most suitable GMP uh, relationship for the one earthquake was equation uh, U at all, um, also at all, let's say in other way, which is derived for the Turkey and considering the uh, Turkey uh, fault mechanism and conditions, only the recordings from the Turkey. So the nation, international GMPs uh, didn't give uh, good results much as the UETO 04. So then we look for the uh, spectrums uh, of the ground motion stands. So, as I mentioned, we also look at the, uh, the importance of this earthquake. Okay, it has a main shock. And the 
the first uh, aftershock, let's say, uh, or the it's also named as the main shock, uh, was also critical for the uh, structures, and many of the structures collapsed after this uh, first aftershock. Okay, uh, and you can see the aftershock distribution in the figure. It was. Uh, if I'm not wrong, okay, I'm not good remembering with the numbers, but it was around zero, 6.5 magnitude, uh, but need to check. So, uh, and this is the aftershocks after one, uh, in one month, uh, and damage in the village, okay, is given on the next figure, okay? You can see the numbers uh, of the damaged structures and injured peoples. And during the earthquake. So, of course, uh, the unengineered structures, okay, like uh, the adult ones, collapse, unfortunately. And you can see that the damage state of the buildings with respect to number of stories adapted from the report. Okay, when you look at that, uh, we can say that the total collapse is uh, located between the three story and seven story, maybe six. And this is another figure for the damage statistics. You can check the paper. So we also look at the um, bridges and historical structures and special structures like tunnels. And the first outcome of the, these observations uh, was and the bridges in Turkey performed very well under the one earthquake, okay? The damage, uh, of course, they have some damage, okay? But they can, they can be repairable uh, and not that much severe, okay? There's no collapse bridge uh, in this earthquake, okay? This is the most severe one. And the tunnel was in good condition. Okay, this tunnel is also close to the uh, epicenter. So then we look at the uh, historical structures also. Okay, the historical structures also give us uh, information about the earthquake uh, magnitude and earthquake history of the region. So first we look at how many earthquakes that uh, they have experienced during their life. And you can see that this is the seven magnitude earthquake for uh, the one, the last one. And we have a close one, 6.3 in 1988, sorry, 1978 paper of Gurkhan et al. So this, uh, this is Kadem Pasha Hatun Tomb and Tomb. And this structure also help us to understand the faulting mechanism, okay? It's uh, the damage in the structure give us idea about the, the direction of the uh, movement of the fault, faulting mechanism. And this is another historical bridge. It performed also well. And this structure is very, very special, okay? It's named as the Akdamar Church. And this church is located on the one lake, as you have seen in the previous figure, uh, there's a lake on the site, uh, on the city. And because of the lake, we also uh, see the site amplification. Okay, in, in the stations, I forgot to mention that, but I will. And in this charge, we have some damage, okay? And they are not the major one, but there are some cracks and spellings due to the earthquake. So the acceleration and velocity time histories recorded that the closest station to the do not show clear source effects, okay? The radia was close to the center. The ground motion at Bitlis is likely affected by site amplification at high frequencies, okay? Uh, it's maybe it's better to show this one. 
Okay. Yes, the bit list was on is the on the other side of the epicenter. Okay. And the comparison of the observed ground motions with GMP suggested, uh, suggested that the one main shock uh, produced on average relatively low peak acceleration values. The furthermore, it's found that the decay of the PGA with the distance is better captured with the Turkish GMPs uh, rather than other models calibrated on European or worldwide data sets. So the, from the initial surveys on the special distribution of the rural damage, it's observed a potential hanging wall effect associ uh, associated with greater levels of damage on the hanging wall, part of the fault compared to the foot wall. So despite the lack of quantitative evidence due to the space recordings, okay, the authors observed that a similar distance uh, from at center or fault plane uh, with similar site conditions, there are variations in anticipated ground motion levels, okay? This fact suggests improvements in the current ground motion prediction equations as not all of them consider hanging wall and directivity and basin effects, okay? It's observed that the fundamental periods of the heavily damaged mid-rise residential buildings were in the vicinity of the computed peak spectral accelerations from measured ground motion data. So the bridges are observed to have uh, minimal damage as uh, targeted in the design, even though they are located with the proximity uh, of the fault the tunnel and dams uh, have no damage. And similar to the bridges, the cultural heritage structures that were 500 or more years old were observed to have minimal damage uh, because uh, a simple design detailing that focus on high rigidity uh, was used for these structures, allowing, the, uh, allowing them remaining intact during the earthquakes. So, in the second part, uh, if you have question, uh, you may ask uh, now for the first part. Otherwise, I will continue with the second, and you can ask the questions at the end also. I mean, you can. Uh, they will ask last, last time, ma'am. You can continue second part. Okay. Our. Thank you. Our. So in the second part, I will talk about the school buildings located in one of the highest. Uh, uh, the city which has high seismicity, let's say, the, which is named as the Istanbul. I know, I, 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 I'm sure that most of you know the uh, Istanbul city, okay? Uh, the, these school buildings, okay, in, in, in our country, in, at the big earthquakes, uh, our school buildings do not perform so well, okay? Most of them get damaged, okay? And most of them collapse. And therefore, there is a urgent need, okay, because we are expecting another big earthquake in the Istanbul, okay, and there's a need to assess the uh, important structures like school buildings and to be able to take the precautions. And because of that, uh, we did a study. Okay, this is an international conference. I want to also mention to that uh, we. Uh, we participated in Turkey. It's an international and a nice uh, conference. I recommend you to follow that. Uh, the next one will be uh, in 2021, big probably, okay, because of the COVID-19 uh, in Gebze, okay? And if you follow that, it's a very nice and highly uh, satisfying and conference for civil engineering. So the comparison of the, the name of our study was the comparison of 2007 and 2019 seismic hazard, ma hazard maps based on spectrum intensities and corresponding engineering demos, okay? Our purpose was to look at how these new 
uh, earthquake code affected or se seismic hazard map affected the uh, school buildings which are located on Istanbul. Okay, we made uh, many study considering these school buildings. Okay, uh, but in here I will show you only one, just giving few details from the other uh, studies that we made. Okay, so due to the unsatisfactory structural performance of school buildings during during major seismic events uh, like Marmara earthquake, Düzce earthquake, Bingöl earthquake or one earthquakes uh, and their catastrophic results, several countrywide projects like ICEMAP or JICA, uh, et cetera, had been initiated, okay? These are international projects, by the way. And these are the other studies that we made for these uh, school buildings, okay? First, we assessed or we created the databases for the uh, Istanbul, Okay, using the ISMAP database. And then we look for the fragility curves, which gives an idea about uh, the structural damage related with the spectral intensity. Okay, if you uh, succeed to es uh, estimate this seismic uh, hazard in the region uh, in terms of intensities like spectral acceleration, like uh, PGA, PGV, or uh, cumulative uh, uh, absolute velocity, okay? Uh, you can observe what will be a probable damage uh, in that location, okay? Looking at these fragility curves. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a meaningful study uh, that can be made for the Istanbul for the school buildings. And then we look for uh, the same structures just looking at what will happen uh, after the main shock, okay? So we also observe the fragility curves by looking at the aftershock effects, okay? Uh, in this way, if uh, like in one, okay, in one earthquake, uh, after the main shock, uh, the main, uh, main shock, let's say the first aftershock, uh, collapse many structures, okay, because of having damage. So uh, it, give, it will give a good um, idea about what will be or what uh, you should expect if you can, okay, if you can succeed to assess or estimate the aftershock hazards. Okay, these are not easy things. And there are so many complicated calculations and estimation. So these are just trying to estimate the damage distribution. So in this study, we look at 321 reinforced concrete structures. Okay, they are uh, assessed according to the previous earthquake code and under the World Bank program, which is named as the ISMAP. You can download the documents uh, from the website uh, of the uh, municipality of the Istanbul. The, in this paper, we only look for the 36 buildings, okay, because there's no need to look for all the school buildings. Most of them are have the same similar uh, plannings and plants, only the soil conditions are different, so they are uh, stereotype structures mostly. So, uh, and you can see the details of the database on the slide. And these school buildings are located in Istanbul, okay? It's on the uh, west uh, past, uh, part of the uh, Turkey. So as I mentioned, we look at uh, the new seismic hazard map uh, for the Turkey. Uh, we look at the country-wise changes, okay? With respect to looking for uh, PGA ratio, okay, ACI ratio, which is uh, between the 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 second and 0 0.1 to the uh, 2.5 second range. Okay, I will mention what is the ACI. ACI is the acceleration spectral intensity, okay, and this acceleration spectral intensity uh, is looking for a certain area under the spectrum and uh, to be able to assess what will happen to the structures in that region, okay? It's a good 
uh, estimator for the damage. Uh, and then uh, our motivation was, what about the reflection of on the expected structural performance? And we look for the three story, four story and five story school buildings, which are located uh, on this region. This is the main historical island, okay? And these are the name of the uh, structures. So uh, we only look for the nine of them for this study. And in both direction, we uh, calculated the pushover curves. We obtained the performance points for each structure on each direction, then convert them into the single degree of freedom systems, okay, using the uh, Turkish earthquake code, code principles and, and using one paper, which is uh, the Akar, I don't remember the date, but it must be 2004, but need to check that again. Uh, and then obtain the SD of analysis, okay? You can see the uh, M star and K star, which is the model mass and model sti stiffness of the, this multi-degree of freedom systems. Okay. In the previous studies, I mentioned, as I mentioned, we obtained the fragility curves for these structures, okay? And try to observe what will be the, if I succeed to guess or estimate uh, the probable PGV as a spectral intensity, then I can estimate the damage distribution in the region, okay? Looking at the area under these curves. So I can say that, and the collapse region is too much, okay? It's too big. So when you look at, when you consider the one earthquake, it was somewhere here, okay? So it means that I'm expecting 30% of the structures will collapse under the one earthquake, okay? Or, or an earthquake which has the same PGB value like one earthquake. So, then we look for or considering the or uh, being affected by the one earthquake, uh, we we uh, we wanted to look for the aftershock effect for the structures, okay? And we obtained the three-dimensional pushover curves. The one of them is showing the main shock, and the second uh, axis is showing the aftershock. So when you uh, just um, check. For example, if you have some main shock acting at here, okay, and then if you expect some uh, aftershock, which is around, let's say, here, so you can estimate your um, damage also, okay? So it's, it's clear that there will be more collapse and more moderate damage structures. And these are the contour maps, okay, which gives you an idea what will be the probable damage distribution, depending on the immediate occupancy, life, safe, life safety, and collapse prevention levels. So then after observing these details, uh, we look at the uh, acceleration spectral intensity, okay? And modified version. So in the, in the original one, it's uh, refer we can refer that to Wontan et al. Uh, 1988. Okay, it is from 0 0.1 to the 0 0.5, uh, and the modified one is considering considering a high ra higher range from uh, 0 0.1 to the 2.5. Uh, why is considering a higher range? Because in real life. Okay. If you consider the uh, regular moderately high rainforest concrete structures, the period range extends. Okay, zero zero point on, uh, zero point one and zero point five, uh, mostly used for the rigid structures like dams. Okay, uh, and therefore they are not. It's not so meaningful to use it for the uh, regular uh, structures. And another. Uh, conversion that we made during this study is uh, using the uh, relevant soil conditions like ZA, ZB, 
uh, ZC, ZD, and ZE, uh, considering the previous map, because we are making the comparison with the previous earthquake report. And in here, I can set, say that these soil conditions are relevant with the NRP, um, which is the American code. Okay, they have the same definitions, mostly, let's say. So we have uh, created our SD off. We have created uh, the S ASI and ASI modified. Uh, for each structure, considering their location, because in near earthquake cloud, the location is important, and, and the map gives you the seismic hazard map gives you different spectrum spectrum for the structure. And uh, so, therefore, we have calculated the ACI and ACI modified parameters by considering the the previous earthquake cloud and the new one, and then we check the intensity measure ratios, okay? And when we look at the intensity measure ratios, we have seen that uh, the structures located on the side zone uh, two, this was interesting actually, uh, showing a higher um, ratio, let's say, by considering the spectral acceleration. And when we look at the ACI ratio, the all values turns into the red. Because, but as I mentioned before, this is for the rigid structures and it gives you conservative results. Okay, the, the ratio comparison, um, okay, it depends on what you are looking for, for the damage. And this is the for modify, ACI modify ratio uh, for the structures. So always larger than one for the ACI. And the ACI ratios are generally smaller than one for earthquake zone one and our site clouds uh, Z2 and earthquake uh, zone two plus site class Z1. However, ACI modified ratios are larger than one for earthquake zone two and site two. Okay, so this was interesting. For short period systems, code spectrum based spectral acceleration uh, ratios are compatible with the ACI ratios. And whereas for medium to long period cases, the spectral acceleration ratios are close to the ACI modified. And for long period systems, the spectral acceleration uh, ratios are affected due to the conservative definition of the descending part uh, of the design spectrum by the Turkish earthquake of 2007. I mean, this part, okay, this definition, these equations, okay, uh, makes a huge difference, okay, in the ACI ratio definitions, okay, and dep depending on the new uh, earthquake, uh, new seismic hazard map uh, definitions like SD1 and SDS. Okay, and the calculation of the spectrum is, is looks like uh, to the FEMA, okay, or ACI 318, let's say. Okay, then we uh, choose uh, ground motions from the peer database to be able to assess the damage or the performance, let's say. Uh, for the Turkish, for the previous earthquake cut, we uh, we need to select seven, and for the new one, we have to select eleven uh, ground motion uh, records and uh, for each site. Okay, so it means that for one of the structure, we have to perform uh, thirty six uh, ground motion or time history analysis uh, to be able to assess the perf uh, performance. And the magnitude range between was six to eight, and fault type was strikes slip generally, but uh, sometimes it's hard to catch uh, the suitable data. Okay, therefore, uh, in that cases, okay, we uh, extended this strike slip and uh, fault mechanisms, including the uh, normal uh, or reverse uh, faultings. Okay, because we have limited number of recorded ground motion database. 
So the selected records are fitted to the target spectra by amplitude scaling in time domain. This is uh, done according to the R code, okay, according to the Turkish earthquake code. And the overall scale factors, okay, was around uh, 0 0.79 to 3.686. And this is how we made the spectral match for each structures, okay, depending on the uh, previous earthquake code and the new one, okay. The, the blue one is the previous one and the red one is the new one. So as you can see, we have a high uh, increase in the spectral acceleration for, uh, uh, for a certain number of period range periods as as you can see in here because of the definition of the uh, this curve line okay of the spectrum uh, it is a little bit higher for the previous one the new one is much correct much more correct and then we look at the uh, mean spectrum Ratio, okay. Uh, it's and uh, this this one is calculated from the selected ground motions and their means, okay. And when we look at that, okay, we see at some uh, certain number of buildings, okay, this uh, acceleration value uh, re is are uh, reduced, let's say. So. Uh, the mean spectrum base uh, uh, base ratios are found to be high for short uh, mid short to medium period systems with respect to the cut spectrum um, base values and the mean spectrum base ACI uh, spectral acceleration ratio larger than one as opposed to lower cut spectrum base spectral acceleration ratio uh, which is a small one. It means that could be associated with the direct effect of selection and matching of the strong ground motion records. So for structures generally falling into the descending part of the design spectra and the spectral intensities corresponding to the former code are higher. So that's why we see this uh, table. So how we perform the time history analysis. We, uh, as I mentioned, we look for the SD of, of each system and we created the pushover. We run the pushover analysis for the structures, obtain the pushover curves for each direction, converted them into the SD of, and then use the OpenSys platform to be able to, it's a free uh, platform to run the um, dynamic, uh, many of civil engineering, and um, problems or solve to solve the many en civil engineering problems and use this platform to make linear time history analysis uh, employing the the previous and the new earthquake code so the peak roof drifts were recorded and average values of maximum top drifts were computed for suites of spectrum compatible records and then using the pushover curve and the um, performance levels, definitions like immediate occupancy, life safety, and collapse prevention, we observe the damage uh, or the performance levels of the structures. So when the performance levels are examined briefly, the school buildings are found to be unsatisfactory according to the bot uh, earthquake code. So, so it means that we have to take uh, the precautions as soon as possible. And out of 18 cases, the, the previous earthquake code marks nine cases as collapse, and uh, whereas the new one marked as five cases. This was a little bit strange, by the way. So we were expecting uh, close to each other. And uh, considering the ratios of the uh, 2019 base mean top drifts and the previous one, the short to medium period systems, the seismic demands are generally found to be higher as confirmed by the ACI base observations. 
So when the structures falling into medium to long period range are examined, since the formal code yields much more critical values in this region. Okay, the seismic demands um, in terms of the engineering demand parameters considered are generally lower as confirmed with the mean spectrum based ACE ratios uh, and with partially with cost spectrum spectral acceleration ratios. The resulting performance levels are most collapse prevention for these cases. Okay, as you can see, collapse prevention. So as you can see, we uh, see here, we can see an extended damage, okay, in the near code as we expected. When we perform uh, the third uh, or yes, with the scale factor of 0.667, uh, we performed the analysis again, we have obtained the damage distribution and it was close to the previous one. So it gives an idea about how this, uh, uh, how much the knee code affected the structural damage okay, in the percentage of the scale factor. So overall results revealed that although the performance levels at the end of the assessment studies for uh, the examine cases, like collapsing cases turn out to be similar or slightly changed. And the spectrum intensities and the resulting engineering demand parameters are highly infused by the seismic code uh, and the haz hazard map uh, uh, amendment as evidenced by numerical comparisons, implicitly pointing the probable need for additional retrofit requirements for Istanbul-based school buildings. Okay, falling into the short to medium period range, especially if not marked as collapse or collapse prevention already. Okay, so we have to take precautions for that. And the last topic was related with the historical structures. So in here, I try to show you that uh, each civil engineering problem needs the special care. Okay, and the condition and risk assessment uh, for different type of structure uh, regards different type of uh, concepts, okay? So uh, when we look at the historical structures, okay, we have to consider many details, okay? Like material properties, contact details, uh, or depending on the type of the structure, the failure mechanisms maybe. Uh, and also the modeling is another big problem in the historical structures. So in here, I will show you only the one of, uh, one of them, uh, which is a minaret, okay? It stands on a four leg structures, um, four column, let's say, and it's more than a 500 years old structure. So in this study, we just look at this structure to observe that what is the, probable uh, PGA value for the site, uh, looking at the collapse mechanisms of this uh, or of this structure, okay? If we can observe that the PGA value, okay? We can say that, okay, this site uh, didn't um, experience an earthquake uh, depending on this information, okay? It will, uh, behave like a seismograph, let's say. Uh, and then in here, I, we know that this structure experienced one uh, earthquake in the previous years, like named as the Lige earthquake. Uh, and this earthquake um, gives us damage uh, to structure okay, on, one, on the one of the main beams, but uh, it didn't collapse and it uh, remained standing more than 30 years, okay? And maybe 40 years, okay? So uh, the damage is extended because of the traffics uh, and the vehicle uh, vibrations, let's say. So this is a very old uh, minaret, as you can see on the graph, okay, it's standing on four legs, and the people believe that when they uh, go uh, under the, uh, or go uh, beyond the columns, okay, their wishes will become true, okay. 
So it's a very, very well known uh, minaret, which is located in Diyarbakir, which is the hometown of me also. And this is the architectural drawings. Okay, we just go to the site and take the measurements and go to the office and draw the uh, architectural plannings and the formations on, on, on the structure. And after that, we created our numerical model, okay? You can see the damage on the structures. There's a one crack here. And this is another one. This is the opposite direction of this one, let's say. So uh, the structure that get damaged in this direction. So big probably it's make a behavior something like this. So the main failure mechanism for this type of structure is for the racking behavior, by the way. And uh, this damage pattern shows it uh, clearly. So in here, you can see the seismicity of the region. Okay, I mean, I'm not mentioned in detail. Uh, and there's one big earthquake in here in, in 1975, which is close to the Diyarbakir. This is my hometown. It's a very old city. So using this historically uh, leisure area for the earthquake, uh, we need to assess what will be the GMP or uh, what will be the possible PGA value for the Diyarbakir, okay? Because there's a distance and there, there will be a side effect, okay? Therefore, we obtain this um, distance uh, or the side effect using the GMP or overcome using the GMP, let's say, and obtain the possible uh, probable PGA value for the structure. So when we did it, we obtained that uh, it will be around 0.5G to 0.06G using two different uh, faulting mechanisms, okay? So it means that the ground motions will, uh, was around uh, in these PGA values. The bad thing of the Ligia earthquake, we don't have the recording, okay? So what we did, we tried to obtain the similar faulting mechanisms from the peer database and choose the another uh, relevant um, ground motion records, okay? Uh, using the same pattern, okay? Same magnitude, same uh, faulting mechanisms and the same PGA values that we observed from the um, GMPs, let's say. And this was uh, CLOMA uh, 5B, the park field uh, ground motion, uh, and the magnitude 6.5 Kalinga earthquake. We used ANSYS Elastina software. Uh, we modeled the bottom parts in detail, okay? Uh, but the rest is uh, modeled with the smear approach and roughly, and I can say that this is an uh, acceptable model because most of the damage will be located on this part, okay? And this part is uh, mostly critical, okay? Uh, the upper part didn't get damaged. And we use the material uh, brittle damage uh, properties. These are the relevant numbers used in the modeling. And we succeed to observe this uh, same damage pattern, okay, um, considering the, the real structure, okay, uh, from the time history analysis results, nonlinear time history analysis results. When you look at uh, when you look at the structure, you can see the stress concentration uh, on the structure, and it's uh, it's matching with the uh, real damage. So for, for that purpose, a natural ground motion recorded at an earthquake with similar magnitude and mechanism source to site distance was selected. It was demonstrated that the analysis was capable of producing the same pattern. Since the level of ground motion is low, it can be assumed that no significant earthquake uh, was happened in the region at least 
for 500 years, okay? The study will be enriched by introducing different ground motions with varying amplitude. That's all that I can present, okay? Uh, if you have questions, any questions, I can take them now. I hope it was clear to you and you didn't get bored, okay? So webinars can be a little bit boring from the distance. Yes, we have some questions. Let me check. You can check chat box also, ma'am. Yes, yes, I am checking that. Uh, how to measure or observe on site before heavy structure plan to escape from severe earthquake or high intensity area? What type of test we conduct? Uh, actually, I didn't get your question. Oh, to escape, okay. Actually, it's a little bit tougher, okay. When, uh, when we look at the Jap Japan, okay, they are really good at the earthquake engineering. If I didn't understand your question uh, wrongly, okay, uh, it's a little bit um, tough, okay. And I think we cannot uh, avoid from the um, big uh, hazards, let's say, this doesn't have to be only the earthquakes, okay? Consider the Japan uh, Fukushima uh, earthquake or, or Tokyo. Uh, the main problem was the tsunami, okay? And they make the design, uh, they made an over design, okay? To be able to eliminate the tsunami effects uh, from the site, but they couldn't manage that, okay? So, uh, we are taking the precautions, okay? To be able to make it, you should run the, you should create the nonlinear models, okay, for rigid type structures, uh, but it needs money, okay. Excuse me, do you have a question? Okay, feedback link, okay. Uh, at, Actually, these papers can be downloaded from the Google. <laughs> when you type um, when you type the name of the study, I will show you. You can download. So I don't have the links now. Okay. So when we perform nonlinear time history analysis, is it necessary to match time history records to target spectrum? Can we use direct record data without matching for perform? Okay. You can do that actually, but in here the purpose is to assess it. Okay, we are we were looking to assess depending on uh, our knowledge um, and uh, depending on uh, our knowledge that this structure experienced one earthquake and still standing and still uh, because of this earthquake it has some small damage. Okay, and it's extended during the time, but depending on the traffic loss. Uh, so if you know, this is a case study and uh, this is an assessment study. Uh, and the best way to assess a time history analysis, okay, using the spectral match actually, okay, when you, when you try to make a design, okay, the codes uh, tells you uh, to use the ground motions, which has the same pattern, okay, uh, which is the same faulting mechanisms for the region, uh, using the most of the time GMPs, okay. Uh, if you if you want to directly use the ground motions, you so you should uh, use the GMP relationships. Otherwise, you have to make the match, spectral match, because the purpose is uh, we are trying to estimate the or we know the estimated probable SAE for the design, and our recordings has to follow that trend. Okay. Thank you. If you like it, I will be happy. Okay, if it's informative for you. Okay. 
uh, walls are considered in seismic analysis. Uh, if you mean the school buildings, no. Okay, we only consider the reinforced concrete structural members. We didn't consider the inflow walls. But if you um, mean the historical one, yes, we consider it. Okay, we made a nonlinear model, a material, we assign a nonlinear material model for the uh, uh, stone, okay, of the walls. And also we define the contact definitions for each block. Then we could, op uh, we can, op uh, we succeed to obtain the failure mechanisms. Okay, when you look at here, this one, you can see the collapse, okay? Okay, which type? Okay, um, normal uh, normal and reverse earthquakes uh, actually uh, create larger uh, magnitudes, okay? And larger PGAs, also the reverse and obliques. So it's hard to tell actually, okay? When we look at the uh, instrumented uh, recordings, this, this is what we see, but nature uh, most of the time surprises us. Uh, ye yes, it, it is safe to introduce combination of shear case with structure, I mean, you or you are trying to mean. Uh, for bridges, yes, okay, they did their job in the, when we look at the one earthquake, okay, they uh, absorbed the earthquake energy and uh, most of the bridges uh, stand without, with or with very minor damage, okay, so yes. How to improve the construction or concrete structure to withstand or okay this there we have the codes okay and also we have the uh, another major uh, hazards okay like Tohoku earthquake so we learn from the earthquakes or hazards and we modify the codes to be able to make better design uh, and until the new one. Uh, come okay, so we have to follow the instructions uh, given in the codes. Okay, and a significant method of uh, model mo for, to model masonry structure. No, I think the the main idea uh, is like this okay you have to approach the macro modeling or micro modeling uh, and it varies it's uh, with other branches let's say so in micro modeling uh, you should use detailed uh, material models for contact for uh, stone and if you have a mortar for mortar and you have to well define the connection also so the mic, uh, in the macro model, macro models, okay, mostly use the smear approach, okay. You distribute it, uh, or you assume that your damage is distributed in the volume, and uh, you just assign the cyclic material behavior for the uh, modeling to be able to estimate the probable damage in the structure. So it's it's a uh, question that have a. Uh, large definition, let's say. So it's better to check the literature. Okay, uh, Professor Kamani, what is the precautionary measures of earthquakes and how many times before we will come to know that? I think it's a little bit a tough question. Um, so th there are some um, precaution uh, or let's say, let's say uh, warning systems, early warning systems, uh, but they are looking for the P waves of the ground motion. So the preliminary waves, and they only are used for 
for today, of course, uh, to cut down the electricity and gas in the city to be able to eliminate the uh, fire that will uh, occur after the earthquake, okay, from, because of the damage. Uh, and it's so hard, it's hard to say that they will uh, eliminate uh, the casualties and uh, economical costs, okay? So I think it's a little bit uh, hard and tougher for now, okay? I, I don't think uh, for a while we can do it. Okay, uh, to find the damping of a particular structure, so we have to look at the energy of the cyclic behavior, energy, or the, we have to look at the array under the cyclic uh, response, okay, uh, after the earthquake, okay, or time history analysis, and you can check the, what will be the damping for that. Or the other, other uh, way, you can uh, look at the logar logarithmic decay, okay? If you have a, a time history analysis, if you get the uh, peak display, uh, roof displacement, let me show you here, okay. Let's say this is the displacement, okay? When you look at the, uh, these two peaks, okay, uh, using the 